coming up in this one, I head to the maddest game of football I've seen in a long time. It's Tottenham versus Chelsea, plus more VAR you can shake a stick at. Sponsored by the guys over at Beer52, and it's all coming up right now. Is it true that I don't like Chelsea too much? Yes. Is that true for most Tottenham fans? Absolutely. Is it also true that at the time of recording Spurs are the only unbeaten side in the Premier League? Absolutely 100%. And is it also true that Maurizio Pochettino, arguably the best manager that Spurs have had in the Premier League era, returns to the ground tonight as a Chelsea manager? Yes, it is. I actually put a little tweet out. I said, Poch returns to Spurs tonight. What sort of reception do you think he'll get? As you can see, it's pretty much split three ways. But a hostile reception came out on top. And um, I think it's a big debate amongst Spurs fans right now. Where do you sit between club legend and Sol Campbell? I'm putting him towards club legend. I'll give him a little clap if I see him. But during the game, I want nothing more than him to lose. Spurs fans got to remember, he got sacked. He wanted to come back. We had three managers since then, I think he made it quite clear. And I'll be honest, as soon as Ange Postacoglu was hired, if given the chance to swap straight away, don't worry about this guy, you can have Poch, I would have done it. I would have swapped. But a lot of people forget what he gave us. He gave us belief. He gave us a reason to enjoy Tottenham. But I feel Ange has now come in and he's done that and he, it, it feels feels even better. But let's not mention the managers that have come from Chelsea to Spurs, eh? Let's, let's mention them. We've got Glenn Hoddle, we've got AVB, we've got Mourinho, we've got Conte. So it's all right for them to come to us. We go to them. If you join Chelsea, Arsenal or West Ham, you're never welcome back. We'll never ever welcome you back. You're Judas, mate. I don't call many people twat. It's just your opinion, that's all. But anyway, I'm buzzing for tonight. Ash is going to pick me up in the G-Wagon. And then we're going to head, so uh, let's go. Yep, I'm absolutely buzzing for this one. And Ash listens to Elliot Yemen, don't you know? Can't lie, it was a swift trip to Tesco, where we walked and very much got our steps in. This is a message from my wife and the red side of the family. You've brainwashed my gorgeous little girl. <laughs> In this all I ask is you let me have my little man so I can take him to Tottenham and be disappointed just like me. It's all I ask. Let me have this one. Stadium, just a five minute walk away. You know, it's Tottenham Chelsea when police are deployed. So many bloody police. High road on match day, though. Lovely place to walk. Right about now, we're going to walk the steps, scan the ting, and walk a hell of a lot more steps. Here we are, food, and there's beer available that fills up from the bottom of the cup. Now, if you're watching this and thinking, I'll have a beer, answer me this. Do you fancy some free beers over Christmas? No one's going to say no, are they? Imagine sitting down on the sofa, a remote control in one hand. It's not actually true, is it? You just find the channel and you put it down. You don't, you don't sit there with it. You don't. We'll leave the remote control out of it. But we could replace it with one of eight free beers that you'll get in the latest case from Beer 52. This case right here. I never have anything available to just open really like slick. I've got a, uh, I've got a pen. The best I've got. And it worked. <laughs> now if you want to get your hands on this case, all you've got to do is simply go over to beer52.com forward slash smith. That's beer52.com forward slash smith. Pay the postage of 5 95 and this will be on your doorstep. This month, Beer 52 are celebrating the largest and most iconic of beer festivals. Of course, it's Oktoberfest. Oktoberfest. They've teamed up with some of the best breweries across Germany and beyond to launch eight new exclusive beers you won't find anywhere else. Would you look at that? Sunday in an orange can with black writing. It's giving me Palmer's FC vibes. I love a minimalistic look. This is Wiper and True in some Lederhosen. Brewed only by five Munich breweries. Mmm, smooth, bit of a herby taste to it as well. I back it. By the way, if you're not a dark beer fan, you can always go on the site and select light beer. Very easy. And how can we forget about the award-winning Ferment magazine? Oh, don't mind me. I'm just learning about the beer that I've just been drinking. To top it all off, you get two free tasty snacks. What have I got here? Chili and garlic pita chips. Mmm. So happy with them. This one also comes with plantain chips. I'm going to save these for later. So Smith, you're telling me you get all of that just by covering the postage of 5 95 Yes, you do. And even after all of that, if it's not for you, you can cancel at any point. So what are you waiting for? Head over to beer52.com forward slash Smith. That's beer52.com forward slash Smith. Cover the postage of 5 95 and this will all be yours. Yep, go on, grab yourself some free beers while I consider vegetable samosa. Is that just samosa? It's actually not, and it's definitely not sagaloo. Chicken tikka masala. Fine, everyone gets their geezer on when they go to an Indian. Fact is, as you just saw, I didn't get the samosa. I got the best pie in the prem. At the the best ground in the Prem. It's Prem de la Prem, where you'll also find the best wall in the Prem. When I die, by the way, I want a little plaque here saying Smith's wall. Please, thanks. Let me talk you through it. It starts with a fantastic view, obviously, is what you want from a seat. The best seat in the house also comes with ample room to the side and behind at a height, which is easily reachable. I stand by the fact that this ground isn't 100% finished. Been there since day one, they're yet to trim the carpet off properly. But look, I can put my shit here, I can put my shit down there. It is Tina Turner. It's simply the best. Blair, this one's for you, mate. I'm eating said pie without fork. I hope you're happy. Following the pie, the nightclub, that is the Tottenham Hotspur Stadium at a light show. Chelsea fans mocked it. Don't blame him, to be fair. Potch then emerged. Hello, mate. Like I point out at every game I go to, Lino just checking if there's any holes in the net. Mate, there's plenty. Nice little artistic view through the shoulders there as we kick off, and I could not be more buzzing for this one. First 15 minutes of this game has been absolutely all Tottenham Hotspur Football Club. And I love what you've done with the place. Yes! Yes! Yeah! <laughs> well, let's 
so maybe, maybe he was wrong. So we wait, and eventually the bad news is delivered. And it is about to get even worse. Cue limbs. Hold tight, there might have been one too many limbs. Although at the time we didn't know it, this was going to be a regular occurrence throughout the night. Stop. Hammer time. Another goal disallowed, offside. So that's the third disallowed goal in this game. But now we're running it back to the phase before that goal. Possible penalty. Yeah, Mike, would you want to check that one out for us? Yeah, yeah, I'll, I'll have a look and I'm going to send him off. Which means if he sent him off, it's a foul, which means it's a penalty. And Tottenham's night is falling apart in front of them. Just so you know, I do agree it was a penalty and a red card. Which of course resulted in this. <laughs> but wait, VAI is checking possible encroachment. Said no one. Nobody at all. Chelsea back in it. So at this moment, I realised this geezer didn't actually look at the league table before we came out. City are top, but he's certain we are. Still top. Still top, he says. Sagaloo. So down to 10 and Chelsea are flying. <laughs> but whilst we're chalking off goals, can we chalk that one off and all? Yep, please, thanks. Stays one all whilst four goals have been disallowed now. Mad. But in the 41st minute, this is where things get really bad for Tottenham. Madison down. Van der Ven looks like he snapped his ammy. It's those two who are replaced by Emerson Royale and Pierre Emil Hoiberg. What a bloody half. But it was far from over because they stuck 12 bloody minutes on. Not much happened though. I oh, know, sorry, it's Tottenham Chelsea. Just checking for a possible red card. Was it given though? Nah, of course it wasn't. He's got Andy the slice of cheese, didn't he? And now I make that half time. <laughs> I can't believe what I just witnessed as a queue up for another pie. Yeah, I'm greedy, alright? No signatures this time. Chicken and mushroom it is. Let me get this right. We've got 45 minutes against Chelsea with 10 men, and it's Eric Dyer partnering Emerson Royale at centre back. What a ride we're in for. There's 72 minutes on the clock, and I don't know why, because we are about to kick off this second half. <laughs> and we're gonna see a lot of this. But here's a clip that shows a world-class prospect quickly switching to inexperienced. <laughs> After that, curtains got chucked out. There's a doggy box down the tunnel, and you now got to deal with nine men on the field. Prepare for an onslaught, or try and make it as hard as possible. Wow. Tackle. Something's different at Spurs this season. A strange belief that even against all the odds, we can make something happen. And so. Tactics are deployed. This lot getting increasingly frustrated because they can't break down nine men. And when they do, Vicario's doing what Vicario does best. Yeah. <laughs> yes! Come on! Much has been spoken about Tottenham's high line, but how long would it last? Oh, go on then, why not? But it wasn't B. Chelsea finally break down Tottenham. Now, whilst I can appreciate it's getting a little bit late, this does annoy me. I get where they're coming from. What chance have we got in this game? <laughs> Well, because this is the modern way of the game now, we're, we're checking, of course. And rightfully, it was offside. Another one chalked off. It's just too much for some people. But listen, there's still something in this. That's a ball. That's a ball! Oh, my word! With just the nine minutes added on, why, I mean, why not? Why not go for it? And we did. We really did. No! It was two all. It was there. I was looking at it. And then I reminded how cruel football can be. You know what, I didn't go anywhere. I stayed and saw this as well. I'll grow up. But yep, I did the whole nine minutes because I wanted to show my appreciation to a side that, well, let me get home and I'll talk about it. Hang on. Oh, how about that, ladies and gentlemen? What can I say? What can I say? <clears throat> if you look at the result, Tottenham have just lost at home 4-1 to Chelsea. I don't know if we're all on the same page. Let me know in the comments below if you're a Spurs fan and if you, you're sharing these 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 feelings right now but i don't mind the score line what i do mind is letting the occasion get to you i think romero he went a little bit gun ho which we all applauded we love a little bit of passion um he then proceeded to kick out of someone i can't remember who it was and then after that uh, gave away the penalty and obviously got sent off so he was always going to get sent off in that game I, I i felt like giving him a bit of leadership this season would you know help him calm down a bit but um i think he's still the same old romero and 
I don't think I want him to change. I don't think I do. I think he understands the rivalry, and I think he was a bit too fired up. A lot of them were. Udogi as well, a fantastic player. He's going to be one of the best left backs out there. I promise you this. But again, both challenges, particularly the first one, he went in like... He went in. The second one, he didn't need to dive in. He'd already pushed the ball away. Yes, he lost possession again, but he just needed to stay calm, stand up. I think losing Mickey van der Ven, you know, the, the way he went down, I think he's going to be out for a while. But looking at it, I don't think we'll see him again in 2023. Obviously, Madders, when he went down, I thought he'd get back up and carry on. It, obviously, it was a lot worse, so he's um, he could be out for a certain amount of time. But everyone was asking these questions when we were flying high, you know, a couple of knocks, maybe a suspension, and, and, and what we're going to do. Well, we showed what we could do with the players that came on. I just wanted to say a big shout out to Eric Dyer. You know, he's got his critics but he came in and I think he played really really well. Hoiberg, Skippy, uh, Emerson Royale, they all they all played their part and you know what I couldn't be more prouder of this Tottenham team. I know we lost. I mean I know we lost to Chelsea. We're getting a lot of hate from rival fans for playing a high line. Why didn't you do this? This is silly. This is stupid. This is suicidal. Do you know what? We we played like that and we played like that up until the 94th minute. You saw it in this video. 94 minutes and Sun is through on goal and a great save in the end. But we are margins away from being two all in that game with nine men against a Chelsea side that are, you know, running both flanks that have got more energy, more pace than us. And in the end, we got found out it was from that sunny chance they went up the other end and scored the, the third and then, you know, the fourth is just uh, irrelevant really. But, but yeah, we got our critics and uh, Ange bit back and said, you know what, that's how we are, that's who we are and that's how we're going to play. And um, if, if, if that's how he wants to do it, I'm backing it because I love this Tottenham side. I love the way we're playing at the moment. And I love that he's only just come in to a side that was essentially in turmoil. It was not a good place, not a good place at all. But now he's taken these players under his wing and he has rejuvenated them, added a couple of bits of quality. Vicario is just out of this world. Vicario is just out of this world. Where did we get our goalkeeper from? One of the best in the league, if not the best in the league at the moment. There are a lot of positives to take from this. It's just the next few games that I'm worried about. And one of those games does include City. Um, I really, really hope Daniel Levy has seen enough in this first part of the season to stick his hand in his pocket in January because we desperately, desperately need to add a bit of depth. A lot of people wrote us off at the start of the season. A lot of people will continue to write us off, but um, I, I'm, you know, I'm extremely proud of this team. And uh, I really enjoyed last night, despite losing 4-1. It's so weird. It's so weird to just come away from a defeat like that. Tottenham won, Chelsea 4. And I come out, and there was a lot of upbeat people there. It wasn't, it wasn't all doom and gloom. And I think as long as we stay positive as a fan base and everyone's happy, then um, that's all that matters, I guess. But yeah, there were so many talking points in that game. VAR, a massive factor. But yeah, let me know your thoughts on the game in the comments below. Was you at the game? Did you watch it on TV? They're my post-match thoughts. Um, and you know what? I'm going to go to bed. But before I do, make sure you hit that like button, subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already, and grab your free beers using the link in the description from Beer52. I'll see you in the next one.